and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Good morning, Second Presbyterian and all of those worshiping with us this morning. It's so good to have you here as we celebrate this second Sunday of Advent. It is a communion Sunday for us, and so I invite you to get your bread and juice in whatever form that is so that you may have those elements ready when we partake a little later in the service. I do have several announcements for us this morning. First of all, I want to say the sympathy of the congregation goes out to Kent Daly and his family in the death of his mother over the last weekend. She had been ill for some time and hospitalized, but we know that a loss is always a significant event. We are thankful for a resurrection faith, but we also join Kent in his grief and the sadness of this time. So please keep Kent especially in your prayers, along with all those who are listed in the bulletin. Also, we are collecting many things here at the church to give away to help others at this time of the season. Our PW has set up the giving tree, so if you have scarves and hats you'd like to bring in and put them on the tree, those are welcome. Also clothing, coats, jackets, sweaters, clothing is also being collected here. And we're still collecting food for the Chattanooga Food Bank for their special collection on December 11th. So if you have extra cans, if you have boxes of food that you can part with, we know they will be most appreciative to receive those. So thank you so much for bringing those by. I want to remind you too, I believe you got an envelope for the Christmas Joy offering in your newsletter. This is one of the special offerings that we take each year. It is primarily for two purposes. Half of the money goes to students who are at Presbyterian-related schools and colleges, and the other half goes to our retired church workers and their families who have critical financial needs, usually for health-related issues. So that is the Christmas Joy offering and would invite you to participate in that. Also, we are celebrating next year our 150th anniversary of the founding of this church. It is such a special event and we are beginning to prepare for that. Sandy Franklin, Suzanne Rushworth, Norma Witherspoon and Scott Miller have formed a small committee and will be including others, but they are working to get us ready for this celebration. And one of the things we want to do is send invitations out to as many as possible who we think would be interested in coming and being with us for the events that will be scheduled for next year. If you know of someone who should be invited, please send their mailing address, their email address into the office to Susan. We will keep track of those and make sure that as many as possible know that we are having this celebration and get an invitation to it. Thank you for doing that. And a last reminder that we are still receiving your pledges Thank you so much for the gifts that you have given already. And it's not too late if you haven't had an opportunity to fill out that card. Thank you. We look forward to a wonderful new year. Let us now continue to worship God. And after the song, we will have the lighting of our Advent candle by David and Sandy Franklin. Two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light be. 
banish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd, gently lead them homeward. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. At this season of sparkle and bright unfolds around us, the silent prayers of peace lie like stars hidden in a clouded night. May we inspire the world with peace. May we let it touch every place of stress, frustration, or fear, so we might feel the presence of peace easing out our hearts and transforming our lives. And may we share its healing power with our children that they might become the inspiration through which peace makes its way to a new yet dreamed of world. May peace light the world this Christmas. join with me responsively now in our call to worship. Oh, the power of the baby. Take the anemic joy that we have today and light a fire under it so that we will boil over with unrestrained giving of ourselves. Oh, the power of the baby. Take this chip off our shoulder. Help us forget the wrong done to us. Make disappointment and rejection disappear. Melt them like intense sun melts the snow. Take away the isolation of staying inside of ourselves, separated from the world. Oh, the power of the baby. God, we are waiting. We've just missed the train to get us where we need to go. We've missed the opportunity to right a wrong. But God, keep us waiting on Jesus, the one who will make it right. Oh, the power of the baby. God, you opened the heavens and sent your son down. Let us see your star come from heaven to show us the way. Let Mary's little baby lead us. Let the mountains quake in his presence. Show us your son through the clouds of our confusion and desperation and exhaustion. Let us experience his power 
Let us worship God. In this season of Advent, while we are waiting, it is easy to become complacent, to turn deaf ears to the problems and situations around us, and to turn inward, focused on ourselves. But we have a God who hears the cries, and we know that if we will rely on God, we will be given the strength to be reunited to compassion and to love. And so trusting in that, let us join together in our prayer of confession. O oh God, if you would only tear open the heavens and come down, come and shake us out of our apathy, come and unite us with your compassion Come and heal us with your presence. We have had enough of our rubble. It is the rubble of a world turned in upon itself. We are tired, God. We are tired of being at war with our neighbor. We are tired of people misusing their positions of power against others. We are tired of acts of terror. We are tired of floods quakes and winds. We cannot take any more death and destruction. Yet, yet, you are our Father. So we gather around your table reminded that you are present in our suffering. But more than that, we gather around your table not in fear of scarcity, but in the abundance of Advent hope that your light can penetrate the darkness of our despair. Your goodness can overcome the chaos of our evil. Your grace can transform the rubble of our sin. Your life can make all things new. Shall we continue our prayer in silence?
Amen. This assurance of pardon, every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain made low and the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel when we ask, we are forgiven. Christ to thee with God the Father and all Holy Ghost to thee. Him and chant and high thanksgiving and unwearied praises be. Good morning, boys and girls. It's so good to see you again. And here we are at our beautiful nativity scene. And let's see who we're going to be talking about today. I'm looking around, looking, looking, looking. Oh, I don't, I don't see her. Oh, that's right. It's because Joseph and Mary brought the baby to the temple after this event had happened. So it's about eight days later and they brought the baby Jesus into the temple. Lots of parents brought their babies to the temple for circumcision, for purification. I know, big words. But those were Jewish practices of faith that they did when their child was born. And mostly, they dedicated their child to God. And Joseph and Mary did that with Jesus. So they were there with probably other parents and their children. And then in the Gospel of Luke, we learn about two old people they had been looking at all those children for years and years, hoping that one of them, one day, would be Jesus. And so, when Joseph and Mary brought this baby into the temple, Simeon and Anna saw the baby, and they took that baby and said, oh, God, this is the one. This is your child, the Messiah. This is Jesus who has come to redeem us, to save us, to bring us back to you. They recognized that this child was special. And you know, this child is special. This child is special to all of us. We love Jesus and we carry him with us every day and I hope that you will carry him with you every day because he loves you so much and this time of year we celebrate that this is our Lord and he came to be with us to know us and to teach us how to love one another I hope you have a wonderful day and a wonderful week. And I hope you'll remember Simeon and Anna, old people, saw who that baby was. We love you.
The scripture reading for this morning is from Luke chapter 2, verses 21 through 38. This is the story of Jesus' parents, Joseph and Mary, presenting him in the temple in Jerusalem for circumcision, the customary Jewish rite. After eight days had passed, it was time to circumcise the child, and he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. When the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what is stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the, for the falling and the rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be opposed so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age, having lived with her husband seven years after her marriage. Then as a widow, to the age of 84, she never left the temple, but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second character in our series entitled Rejoicing in Hope is found in Luke's Gospel at the temple when Joseph and Mary came to present Jesus. Her name is Anna. Along with Simeon, Anna gives testimony about the baby Jesus being the Messiah. Luke frequently pairs male and female examples when giving us accounts of Jesus. We learned of Zechariah and Elizabeth the parents of John the Baptist. His healing stories often describe a man and then a woman. Jesus' friends are Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And Jesus' resurrection appearances are to the women and to Peter and the disciples. Today we hear that Joseph and Mary encounter Simeon and Anna. Being devout Jews, Joseph and Mary were keeping all of the Jewish laws dedicated to childbirth. Jesus was circumcised on the eighth day, placing the sign of the covenant upon each male child and naming the child at that time. Mary's purification after childbirth involved making a burnt offering at the temple. The usual offering was a year-old lamb, but because of their poverty, 
they brought a pair of doves or pigeons. They were also at the temple to consecrate their firstborn male to the Lord. As when Hannah presented her son Samuel to the priest for God's service, Joseph and Mary also believed that their child belonged to God. So they are there at the temple for Mary's purification and for the presentation of their child Jesus to God. Simeon sees them first and declares by the prompting of the Holy Spirit that here is the Messiah whom he was promised to see before his death. And after Simeon's pronouncement of blessing and warning about the child to Joseph and Mary, Luke introduces us to Anna. Luke tells us that she is a prophet the daughter of Phanuel, of the tribe of Asher. Asher was the eighth son of Jacob and one of the tribes of Israel for whom Joshua had allocated land. After the death of Saul, the tribe of Asher joined the other northern Israelite tribes in making David king. So we learn that Anna is a descendant from significant Jewish lineage. We also learn that Anna is quite elderly. She lived with her husband for seven years and then as a widow to the age of 84. Interesting that Luke places the recognition of the Messiah in the eyes and mouths of two persons for whom life was at its end. Those who were waiting with hope, with expectation, that they would not see death until they saw the Lord's Messiah were now blessed with that reality. Our Western culture idolizes youth our models of beauty and success are physically fit, flawless skin, full heads of hair, young men and women. Those of us who are aging, okay, aged, are bombarded with ads promising remedies for wrinkles and hair loss, sagging jaw lines, aches and pains. While many cultures celebrate the aging process and venerate their elders, we see aging as a shameful experience. Physical signs of human aging tend to be regarded with distaste. People who are aging feel that there's something wrong with them that they're losing value. Psychologist Eric Erickson argued that the Western fear of aging keeps us from living full lives. He wrote, lacking a culturally viable ideal of old age, our civilization does not really harbor a concept of the whole of life. The aging in our society are constantly reminded of shortcomings, forgetting people's names or directions, talking a lot about ailments, groaning when we bend down, not knowing any songs in the top 10. Though we may emphasize the young as models of vision and vigor and imagination, as if these were the only people worthy of notice. The Bible portrays quite another story. Many key characters 
chosen by God to move forward the divine human story, were senior citizens, many years past their prime, even according to our standards. Noah was 600 years old when told to build the ark before the flooding of the world. Abraham and Sarah were 100 when promised a child. Joseph was 110 when he died. Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist, was getting on in years. And now Anna, who was 84 when she encountered the baby Jesus. Age is revered in scripture as a sign of favor. The ancient patriarchs and matriarchs named in the genealogies are esteemed for their long life and wisdom. Simeon and Anna have been waiting, waiting for consolation. With the abiding practice of prayer and the hungry protest of fasting, Anna clings to hope and waits. How many mornings has she awakened and nothing has changed? How many days has she hungered and been left empty? How many nights have fallen? While all of Anna's waiting matters, she cannot make it happen. She cannot hold what God has not given. It is still God's promise in waiting. Anna has given decades in prayer and fasting. Fasting in grief over what has been lost. Fasting in protest because so much is wrong. Fasting in hope for God to set things right. Simeon and Anna show up for one more day. It is their faithfulness that takes the cake in this Christmas story. At least Zechariah and Joseph and Mary and the shepherds had visits from angels to rely on. At least they had some indication that God was visiting earth in a most miraculous way. Simeon and Anna got nothing except their faith and faithful waiting. And then God shows them what God has given. The Messiah God has now given. Consolation God has now given. Jesus God has now given. They look at this tiny scrap of baby and see the salvation of the world. Luke stresses through them that salvation is for all flesh, all people, both Jews and Gentiles. Simeon is now ready to depart this world. But Anna wants to share the good news. She's driven to bear witness to what she has seen, the redemption of Israel. Today, Jesus' disciples continue the long vigil of faith, waiting and watching for the day of his coming. We don't know what each day may bring. One day can change every next day, for better and for worse. That hope animates us and keeps us alive, young and old, consoling us, sustaining us with optimism for the future. That hope links us with the tribe of Asher, the God of Jacob, 
and all the saints in our own church history who trusted that light would come, a light for revelation. That hope allows us to proclaim with Maimonides, who classified Jewish law, when he said, I believe with complete faith in the coming of the Messiah. Though he may tarry, I await him every day. How many days? How many nights? Our waiting matters. Our faith matters. And until he comes again, let us live our full life, all of our years, watching and anticipating what God has already given and what God will give again. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People will come from north and south and east and west to partake at this table, and we invite you to join with all of them. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give God our thanks. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. We remember on this special day, this second Sunday of Advent, that it was our Lord Jesus whose birth we are about to celebrate, but also we remember that he came to give his life to redeem us. And we do remember that on the night he was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so remembering me. And in the same manner, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. As often as you drink of it, do so, remembering me. And so, friends, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we do proclaim our Lord's death, his resurrection, until he comes, and until we celebrate it with him in the new kingdom. I invite you now to partake at home of the elements that you have, the bread, the juice, as we join in prayer momentarily. Gracious God, thank you, thank you so much for this meal which you have given. Thank you for the gift of your Son and that in his body and his blood, this bread and this cup, we remember and celebrate his presence with us yet. And we thank you for the nourishment the nurture that this meal gives us as the Spirit is here, filling us with your presence. For all of those, Lord, who partake of this supper, we thank you. We thank you for Christians around the world, for those of faith who look to you to lead their lives, as we look to you, God, for life, and for renewal, and for our future. And we pray for all of your children who are hurting, who are suffering, who are ill, who are alone. 
God, that your same spirit will be with them and upon them. We ask you now to knit our hearts together, to strengthen us from this meal, and to give us courage as we continue through our days to bear witness to you, our Redeemer, our Savior, who is Jesus Christ our Lord, and taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead, and lead us not into temptation, temptation but deliver, deliver us from evil. From for thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the, and the power, power and the glory forever. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. young and old, God will reveal God's self to us and accompany us as we wait and watch and prepare and go about our days trusting that we will see Jesus in our midst and we will see him at the last. And knowing that and believing that, we say, may the grace of God and the love of Jesus Christ our Lord and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Amen.